Hello and welcome back to Movie Husbands. Today we are reviewing About Dry Grasses. Directed by Nuri Bilay Ceylon, About Dry Grasses follows Samit, a teacher who used to live in Istanbul but has been assigned to a post in a remote village in eastern Anatolia. He and his co-worker and roommate, Keenan, are soon accused of inappropriate behavior by two female students. The film stars Denise Selagoglu, Merv Dizdar, and Muzab Akisi. So Jeffrey, what did you think about About Dry Grasses? Uh, so this director, I absolutely love this director. He made a film in 2011 called Once Upon a Time in Anatolia. I truly believe believe that this is one of the very best films of the past 20 years or so. It's just an extraordinary film. I always tell people it's kind of like if Tarkovsky directed No Country for Old Men. It's a crime procedural with all of these astute observations and political debates, and, and it's just extraordinary. He went on to make two other films that were hailed at the Cannes Film Festival, Winter Sleep and Wild Pear Tree. Both great films. I'm a huge fan of those films. I would give both of them an A if we were reviewing them tomorrow. So anyway, I, I'm just a big fan uh, of this filmmaker, and I, I really believe in, in the films that he makes. I think that About Dry Grasses is probably the most unfocused I've ever seen him. It is a style he's experimented with before. I mean, he's not a brief man from this film or any of those films. The film I absolutely love by him is about two hours and 40 minutes long, and both the other films I mentioned are three plus hours long. It's just not in his nature to be brief. I think he approaches films from the perspective of almost like a Russian novel. So they're more like sprawling sagas that experiment with all these different ideas and characters rather than being a cohesive whole. In that way, I think his films are, and I actually think you said this to me when we came out of the theater, is his films are more exploratory. Like he makes a film looking for something, experimenting with all of these different ideas and themes. Even from that perspective, I admit that as much as I loved a lot of parts of this film, I did, and I admired almost all of it, I admit that I did find my patience waning a bit with this one. I don't want to come off negative because I loved a lot of this, but it's the first time that I thought he should perhaps be shooting with a rifle instead of a shotgun. Okay, that's an interesting metaphor. Yeah. But I do tend to agree with you on this movie. I think I probably liked it a little bit less than you mm -hmm. for the fact that it is very long and it did lose me a little bit. I do think that this movie, I think, lost me a little bit thematically, or it might have just been too obvious by the end. I think that there is quite a bit to ponder in this movie. I'm just not sure that it ever settles on something or or a way like an artifice to bring it all together. It's actually interesting because I think that the ending monologue of this film is really insightful and terrific, but I'm not totally sure how it pairs with the film that came before it. And I won't spoil what that monologue's about, but I think it's a lot of um, looking at your past and looking at your future and what do you have hope in. And that's certainly a part of this film, but I thought it was odd that he chose to use that as an ending point when there are so many other amazing, I mean, there's an amazing dinner table scene that we'll talk about that is a, a thriving political debate. There's just so many themes going on in this film that I don't know if he ever effectively kind of coalesces them. Yeah, and one of the things that makes that very difficult in a movie like this is that it's extremely slow paced. The opening shot of this movie is basically our main character arriving to this Turkish village in the middle of winter. There's snow covering the entire ground and then he's just walking. And it seems like this camera is following him trudging through the snow for a good five minutes of yeah, this see, film. Yeah, I love that. I, I can watch that all day. <laughs> and I was engaged by this type of film style. I think it's very realistic. The film doesn't rush through these moments. It really marinates in them and takes its time to let conversations open up. Mm -hmm. And I think that benefits later on. There's a great scene, the dinner sequence that you had specifically mentioned that we'll get to in a little bit. But that was one of the scenes that I thought about. Getting back to the plot of this movie, because I do feel like there was almost two different things going on. There's this one plot where him and his co-worker are being accused of being inappropriate with these two students. One of them is Sevim. And this is somebody that his character has a lot of connection with. She's almost like the golden child of his classroom. He gives her little presents that he brings back from his travels. And I think he sees these things as very innocent. I think it seems like she has an innocent crush on her teacher that he's capitalizing on for yes. attention. Yeah. We react to a lot of situations with this masculine anger. Whenever he loses grasp of something, whenever he loses power over something, you can see him fanatically trying to regain it. Basically, that seems to be one aspect of the movie. And then his relationship with... Nure is completely different. It's very much about politics and teaching, and there's a lot of in-depth conversation happening there that seems thematically very different from that other part of the movie. Best actress winner at Cannes, by the way. She's oh, ama really? She's amazing in the film. She is yeah. very amazing in the film. I love that dinner table scene. It's a, a scene that's essentially about the effectiveness of conversation versus revolutionary actions. You could almost see it as a parable between leftists and left-leaning individuals in America, something that we constantly talk about. 
So I love that scene. It's also very well directed, very well acted, and very well written. I think if the whole film had been as engaging as that scene, it could have gone on for as long as it wanted to. It was really cool to see that a movie that takes place in Turkey and is talking about Turkish politics had so many similarities with here in America in terms yeah. of our politics. I think another aspect of this movie I really liked is the conversations that happened between the two teachers and this older man. Yeah, he has like a workshop or study type thing. And there's a younger character that I think he's related to that they keep having conversations about that. They have conversations about work, about labor, about the government's involvement in labor. Oh, that was all really interesting. There's a very interesting scene in this movie that we're not going to spoil, but it has a way of breaking the fourth wall in a very notable way. In a, in a way that takes you out of the film quite intentionally. And I didn't really know what to make of that, I have to be honest. I thought it was a really interesting flourish and one that I've never seen this director use before. It really woke me up. It was happened about two and a half hours into the movie and I was like, whoa, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> but again, I'm not totally sure what to make of it. It is a complete outlier with the rest of this film. It was something that everybody in the theater gasped that they were yeah. like shocked that this moment happened and then at the q a the woman didn't even ask about it yeah i'm like that would be the first thing i would be asking about after i saw that movie but anyway yeah i wish yeah. we heard more about that uh there's a particular thing that our main character does during the sequence mm -hmm. gave me the intention that his character was just as much a facade as the movie was and i saw it as like his narcissism being a part of him and him having to break that fourth wall in that moment was, I think, a metaphor for that. Yeah. So the film is calling attention to its own artifice to show how he is an artifice of his own creation. Exactly. Yeah. That's probably the only logical explanation, I think. <laughs> it certainly doesn't have a like practical utility in the film. It's meant to show some sort of thematic half. So I... I I agree with you on that. In the Q&A, he actually said that it's expected in Turkish film to bring up politics. It's almost odd to not have them as some sort of cornerstone in your film because it's so naturally a part of their lives, even more so than in America, he said, that that's why his films always have these sort of political diatribes or maybe these left turns into political discussion. The debate, while very passionate, was very intellectual, and you felt like you were learning something about each of their perspectives. Yeah, and both sides seem to be engaging with reality, which is a nice thing. Yeah, <laughs> and here, unfortunately, that does not exist in so many ways. So yeah. I, I thought that was a great commentary on maybe how politics work there and how they do talk about them, and maybe we need to talk about them more like that. There's a scene where, and this is actually a scene that you went to the bathroom for, where he goes to a colleague's house and he says the colleague believes his friend Keenan is actually the guilty one and our main character was just swept into it because he's associated with Keenan. Our main character immediately begins to be spiteful and angry towards Keenan and immediately just thinks, oh yeah, he's the guilty one and, yeah. and I'm exonerated. I thought that was really interesting and it shows how easily that this character is willing to exonerate himself for the guilt of others. But I just found that really interesting and it shows just how quickly he can turn on a dime just to save his own ego from something. It was very tar. like. <laughs> yeah, it was very similar to tar. So you ready to go to grades? Yeah, I'm going to give this film a B, which for how much I like this director, I think is a little low. I was expecting a bit more. I would really like to rewatch this at some point. We did see this at eight o'clock at night in a packed movie theater. We had had a long day. So I wasn't in my best frame of mind to give this, you know, the best judgment that I could have. I'd really like to rewatch this at some point, maybe at home where I can pause and ponder it a bit more. But ultimately, I just think I had to stretch my understanding of the film too much to bring all of these disparate themes together, that it just felt unfocused instead of sprawling. He always treats his films like Russian novels, which I really like. And you could tell that Russian literature is a huge influence on him. But here is the first time that it felt like a lesser Russian novel to me. I know I said this in the beginning, but please watch Once Upon a Time in Anatolia. It's an extraordinary film. This filmmaker is one of the most talented people working today in a true orator. I completely agree with you. I give this movie a B as well. Going back to what you were saying, I think this movie does require more than one watch. I think there are a lot of details. Thematically, this movie is about so many different things. But I think that's one of the shortcomings of it in my mind, because when you have so many themes coming together by the end of this movie, there has to be something that ties them together. Mm -hmm. After the first watch, I'm not sure that quite got there for me. Jumping back to the Q&A briefly, I think when he was talking about the movie, it did seem like there was a lot of themes that he wanted to discuss in the film, but he was even unsure of how all that really tied together. It seems more of like a lifestyle film than it does something with an overarching meaning. 
And so maybe that's just what he was going for. Yeah, I think he said the script was originally 500 pages and they cut it down. So he clearly went into this with an exploratory perspective. Let me just begin writing and see what comes out of it and we'll see what I want to explore. And maybe the film ultimately just never got to a fully formed place before his opportunity to make it. All right, so that's it for our review of About Dry Grasses. About Dry Grasses does not have a release date at the time of filming this review. So it should be out, I think, in early 2024 before the Oscar season starts. Yeah, it was submitted as Turkish's international film for this year. So that means it has to be released before the Oscars. All right. So if you've seen About Dry Grasses, let us know in the comments what you thought about the film. As always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Yeah.